Kia ora and good morning. This morning we have worship from our brothers and sisters in South Africa, Cebu, Philippines, and finally from Sydney, Australia. We're also studying the book of Luke this morning. Stick around after the service for the Zoom ID as we'll all take communion in our Bible talks together. Let's have a great service. Your hand is upon us, your spirit with 
and your holy Lord, O oh God, Lord, O oh God, Lord, O oh God, we stand in awe. Welcome to our YouTube service this morning. We're glad that you can join us. Tomorrow, Auckland starts level two, and let's pray that as a country and as a city, we continue to move forward. Although I'm sure many of us are tired of lockdown, compared to other countries, we are extremely blessed. So let's keep persevering, keep seeking the good of others, and at some point, life will return to normal. On Sundays as a church, we study out a book of the Bible, and recently we finished our study of Genesis which is a story of beginnings. This morning, we're starting the Gospel of Luke, which is the story of Jesus and how he fulfills every promise in Genesis and in the Old Testament. Let's read Luke chapter 1, a few verses together, and talk about this idea of what it means to be serious in our seeking of God. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 1, many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. And so what does it mean to really be serious in our seeking? I think we find out in these four verses. In verse one, Luke says that many people have undertaken the goal of writing down the story of Jesus. A lot of people are talking about it. A lot of people are writing it down. And we know for sure that the gospel of Mark has been written already by this time. Mark's gospel is written between 65 and 73 AD, both Matthew and and Luke are written from 80 to 90 AD, and they both are using Mark as one of their sources for their Gospels. Plus, according to Luke, other people are writing down the story of Jesus as well. There's many different sources, and both Matthew and Luke seem to use another source, not available to us, but scholars call it Q, to include some more material about Jesus. And the point is that in this time, everybody is talking about Jesus and people are trying to gather all the information and write it down. And as a result, when Luke finishes his gospel, over 50% of it is unique. It's not found in Matthew or Luke or John. And so without this gospel, we miss out on certain periods of Jesus and his ministry. In verse one, it also says that these things have been fulfilled among us. So Jesus' life and his teachings fulfilled all the prophecies in the Old Testament, not just in Genesis and not just for the Jews, but for all humanity. Jesus is the one that everybody should be placing their hope in. In verse 2, he refers to these eyewitnesses. These, these are the apostles of Jesus. These guys spent three years with Jesus, learning his method and his ministry and his message. And, and so to qualify as an eyewitness, you had to have been present with Jesus for quite a long time. In Acts chapter 1, verse 21, when the apostles replaced Judas, they, they give the criteria for what it meant to be an eyewitness. And they said, you have to be, have been with us from the beginning, from the baptism of John, until the day when he was taken up from us. And so that qualified, anybody that fit that criteria could have been an apostle. And so they chose Matthias. And so for, for the first 30 years of the church, these guys that were eyewitnesses and had spent time with Jesus, they were the ones instructing the church. 
It's likely that if you would have went to a church service in 40 or 50 or 60 AD, you might have been hearing from the apostles, the actual guys that literally walked with Jesus, the eyewitnesses, people who saw him with their own eyes. This was the transmission. Jesus had taught his apostles and the apostles passed it on to the church. And so in these first couple of verses, Luke is saying there, there are two sources about the story of Jesus. One are these written accounts that are circulating at the time. And another is the actual people, the eyewitnesses that saw him and then walked with him and then delivered his message onto us. And then he says, but, but I've been following this for quite a while as well. I've carefully investigated. And that word investigate is a Greek word, parakalatheo, which, which means to really walk alongside somebody to keep close company. It's not like a superficial acquaintance, like uh, I know Kieran Reed or I know Richie McCall. This is no, I I know somebody because I've spent time with them and I've studied their life. And and Paul uses this same Greek word in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10, writing to Timothy, you, however, have followed Paracolatheo, you, you followed my teaching. You've investigated my life. You know my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness. What's he saying? He's saying, hey, look, Timothy, you know who I am. You've investigated my life. You've spent enough time with me. You have a deep understanding of who I am and what I stand for. And, and so that's what Luke is saying. He's saying, I I've I've read these accounts. I've talked to the eyewitnesses. I, I know these things closely. I've spent time with these people. I've interviewed them. I've investigated it. I've done my homework. In fact, when, when we read Luke's gospel, he goes back further than any other of the gospels to start describing the story of Jesus. He goes back to the events surrounding the birth of John the Baptist. And so we know he's done his homework. And he says, I've done all this for you, most excellent Theophilus. And we're not really sure exactly who Theophilus is, but Luke does use this same phrase twice more in the book of Acts. Luke is also the author of the book of Acts. And in chapter 24, verse 2, he uses that phrase when addressing Felix, most excellent Felix. He uses it again in chapter 26, verse 25, most excellent Felix. Festus. So when he uses that phrase, he, he, he's referring to some influential official. And so most likely, Theophilus is a, a member of the community who has heard stories about Jesus, and Luke knows him somehow, and this Theophilus may, maybe is influential in the community, and Luke wants this chance to, 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 to fill in the gaps. I know you've heard this stuff, but, but let, me, let me give you a, a complete investigation Let let me show you who this Jesus is and what he's all about. Plus, if if you have certainty, because that's what verse 4 says, so you you may have certainty. Theophilus, if if you really get this, you can influence a wider group of people. And so while it might be just addressed to one man, Luke is probably hoping, hey, through this one guy, the story of Jesus might get widespread. And and so from these few verses, there, there is a question that emerges, and why write another gospel? It seems like in this time period, there are plenty of accounts available. And there are eyewitnesses that saw Jesus and walked with Jesus. And, and they're doing a good job of, of passing on the story of Jesus. So what was wrong with the gospel of Mark? And what was wrong with the gospel of Matthew? And the answer is nothing is wrong with them. Luke, Luke doesn't say they were inadequate. So I started on my own journey. But he is saying... I'm a serious seeker. I I, I went and I talked to these people and I found out all of the details about Jesus because if he is who he says he is, boy, I I better make sure I'm doing my homework. And he's, he's serious in his pursuit. And he wants Theophilus to equally be serious as he reads this book and as he also reads the book of Acts. And it's a challenge for me and for you and for anybody, really to be really serious in their pursuit of finding God and following Jesus. We we all know that this is our prime minister, but if she gave this photo to a police officer as evidence for her ID, 
the officer clearly wouldn't accept it. He, he wouldn't be satisfied. He, he would reject this because it's clearly a cartoon. It's a caricature. It's close, but it's not the real thing. It's not her genuine identification. And the officer wouldn't settle for that. And likewise, there's a spiritual truth that we cannot settle for the caricature versions of Christianity or the caricature versions of Jesus and what it means to follow Jesus, because there are plenty of them out there. This idea of really being serious in our pursuit of God and following Jesus applies across the board. For instance, anybody wanting to follow Jesus, perhaps they've grown up in a Christian home and they feel like I I have a kind of a foundation, but I haven't really, haven't been serious. You, You know, sometimes it's tempting to just be satisfied with the idea of growing up in in a home that's had Christian values and and Christian influence, and and then at some point assuming that being a Christian is inherited, like your hair color, that you just automatically become Christian because you've been influenced by people around you. And but the Bible says that it doesn't really happen like that. It happens as a result of somebody intensely investigating the story of Jesus and then making a decision to make Jesus Lord of their life after understanding who he is from the Bible. And and sadly, people just get satisfied with going to church, but not really investigating what the Bible actually says. In fact, it's absurd how many people claim to be Christian, but first of all, don't ever read their Bible. And secondly, have no idea what the Bible actually says about following Jesus or what the Bible says about how to become a disciple of Jesus. So if that's you, if if you're really trying to get back on track, you're going to have to push past what you've heard in the past, maybe from your parents, maybe from your pastor or your preacher, and and you're really going to have to go back and be serious about reading the Bible and building your foundation on the Bible. And I, I want to invite you to, to join us on a weekly basis on YouTube or once we meet in person to join us as well and, and really dive into the book of Luke with us and get to know the biblical Jesus, not the caricature of Jesus. For those of us that are actually following Jesus and are, are disciples of Jesus, it, it is a challenge to stay aggressive in our pursuit of Jesus. I mean, this year has certainly been challenging with everything that's been going on. It's incredibly hard to stay engaged watching church on YouTube. It's so easy to do something else in the lounge or multitask, or it's so hard to stay connected while on Zoom. It's so much easier to just turn off your camera and walk around the room or send off emails and do everything else in the background. And But when life returns to normal, it's going to be all of us trying to really seriously seek Jesus and, and his body once more. And so being serious means we always adapt to whatever's coming our way and whatever's going on on life. It also means that we we continue changing throughout our different life stages. I'm hopefully different now as a married man than I was when I was single. And I'm hopefully different now as a parent than before I was a parent. And all the different nuances of life and all the different valleys and the highs and lows of a serious seeker of Jesus continues to get close to the Bible and allow the Bible to change them at a heart level. Or the alternative is to just change enough to have other people get off your back and to be satisfied with how you're doing. But knowing deep down inside, you're not really seriously going after Jesus like he calls us to. And the, the, the Sunday school faith that we had when we first became Christians, that that's not going to work as we mature. And I'm not saying you have to become a scholar or a theologian, but I believe the Bible does say we must seek Jesus with all our heart. And all of us for sure have kind of a baseline knowledge, a baseline understanding of Jesus. That's very similar to Luke. I mean, he had the accounts of his day. He had the eyewitness reports, and but he didn't really settle for that. He wanted to go back and investigate and go back and interview people so that he could arrive at a new understanding of Jesus. 
And perhaps you're feeling like that, a little bit like, ah, I've kind of lost, I've kind of lost my edge and I've lost my zeal and I want something refreshing. And we all feel like that for certain times. And it's at those moments that we really have to allow our heart to seriously seek Jesus. And, and here's a few suggestions if you're finding yourself in a place where, hey, I, I just don't know what to do. I need, I need a new jump start. I need to rejuvenate. Here's a few options. Or yeah, I, I know you could, you, you could figure something out on your own, but sometimes it's helpful to have some suggestions. Maybe for the rest of the year, you read through a gospel in a different translation that you haven't read before. Most people are familiar with the NIV, but maybe you could read from the NLT or the NASB or the ESV. Just, just something to get a different flavor, a different word, a, a different, different understanding at one of the Gospels. A really incredible book about Jesus is called Jesus Through Middle Eastern Eyes by Kenneth Bailey. Probably, probably one of the best books out there. Or maybe you can study a story that's very familiar to you about Jesus and study it out until you learn something new and exciting about that familiar story. Perhaps you can study how Jesus responds to political questions because he does. And he responds amazingly in the gospels to those questions that are presented to him. Or maybe you study out how he responds to a religious crowd. And then maybe you find out that you're religious in your own heart and how Jesus has something to say to you. Or maybe you study out an aspect of Jesus that really gets you excited until you want to influence someone influential. I, I believe that's kind of what we have here with Luke. He has a friend, Theophilus, who's influential, and he goes back and he really digs and researches and seriously pursues everything he can, all the information he can about Jesus, and then he presents it to Theophilus. That's pretty inspiring, but that's also pretty challenging. And I would encourage all of us as, as mature Christians to really dig deep until we feel like, I, I, I want to reach out to somebody influential and help them understand the gospel. Paul says later in the book of Ephesians that the love of Christ surpasses knowledge. So it's not like we're going to ever exhaust our study of Jesus. Just like if you're married, you're, you're never going to exhaust knowing your spouse. And with pursuing Jesus, there's always something deeper to explore. There's always an opportunity to seriously investigate. And so as we conclude on these few verses from the book of Luke this morning, I want us all together to really decide to be serious seekers. Let's not settle for anything less than the real Jesus. Amen. I've got a hope. I've got a hope. I've got a cry. I've got a cry. I've got a love. Won't let me down. Won't let me down. I've got a hope. I've got a hope. I've got a cry.
Jesus, he found me. Jesus, he found me. His blood on the cross. His blood on the cross. I got a hope. I got a hope. I get to share. I get to share.